350,000. That is the number of people immediately killed in 1945 when the United States dropped two atomic bombs on Hiroshima on your left and Nagasaki on your right. Despite the disturbing impact of these events, 85% of Americans actually supported the use of nuclear weapons then. And that was mostly because policymakers argued that it saved thousands of lives in the long term and it also elicited Japan's surrender and then led to the end of World War II. But since then, public support actually decreased. And this um, public aversion against nuclear weapons, the non-use since 1945, and the very few countries that actually have proliferated since then, is called by some scholars in my field the nuclear taboo. And that makes some sense. If I ask you right here, right now, who supports nuclear weapons? Who supports the use of them? No one, exactly. <laughs> But that question is phrased way too simple. An actual conflict scenario is way more complex and an actual threat. So we have a different set of scholars in my field. They actually use survey experiments and they present respondents with a hypothetical but realistic scenario. And they found that today, 55% actually still do support the use of nuclear weapons if they are presented with a similar threat scenario than they were in 1945. The only difference being the dropping of the bomb on Iran instead of Japan. So this is where my research comes in. We now know that some people actually still do support the use of nuclear weapons. So I want to understand why is that? What makes an individual support the use of nuclear weapons? So in an inter interconnection between uh, political science, comparative politics, and social psychology, I find that people who are reminded of their mortality are more supportive of nuclear weapons than those that, that are not. And that reminder of mortality is a proxy for a threat from a nuclear weapons country. So I used two survey experiments in the comparative case study between Israel and the US. And why does all of this matter? Well, the activists that we have now and non-governmental organizations, they too often assume that the public simply supports their efforts, their disarmament efforts, to get rid of all nukes and to reach this global zero. But we actually have to work on people's favoritism of nuclear weapons as a defense mechanism in times of conflict. So their assumption is actually too simple and really this non-support only works in peaceful times. So only if we can understand the reason and the why people support those weapons, we can turn this support into non-support and really prevent this from happening again. Thank you.